Mikkel Diane Biggs was born on May 31st, 1987, the first child of Darian and Tracy Biggs. She was later joined by younger sisters Kimber and Linnell and younger brother Nathan. Mikkel was a quiet, straight-A student who played piano and clarinet. She loved art and drawing, aspiring one day to be a Disney animator. But she also had a bit of a mischievous side. In a Reddit AMA around 2014, Mikkel's sister Kimber recalled Christmas morning of 1998 when Mikkel talked her into sneaking down before their parents woke up to see what Santa had brought them. Unfortunately, things would change drastically for the family just a few days later. On the evening of January 2nd, 1999, 11-year-old Mikkel and 9-year-old Kimber thought they heard the familiar sound of an ice cream truck coming through their neighborhood. Around 5.50 p.m., the girls walked about four houses down to wait for it. Kimber was walking their dog, and Mikkel was riding Kimber's new bike, which she had just gotten for her birthday. It wasn't long before Kimber got impatient and gave up on waiting for the ice cream truck. She walked back to their house, where her mom told her to go back out and tell Mikkel it was time to come home. Kimber walked back outside, but didn't see her sister anywhere. As she approached the area where they'd been waiting, she saw her new bike in the road, one of the tires still spinning. Police would later estimate that Mikkel had been alone for about 90 seconds. At first, Kimber was mad that Mikkel had left her new bike in the road, but she also had a feeling something was seriously wrong. So she went back home and told her mom what had happened. At first, Tracy Biggs thought her daughter might have gone over to a neighbor's house. Kimber and one of the children from that family continued to look for Mikkel. When they couldn't find her, the police were called. By the time police arrived on the scene, Kimber had already put her bike away. But they were able to judge that Mikkel appeared to have been running from someone. Two quarters were found on the ground, presumably the one she was going to use to pay for ice cream, but ended up dropping. Search dogs lost her scent after a few feet, leading police to believe she'd been put in a vehicle and driven away. And they had very little physical evidence and no witnesses. They investigated all the ice cream vendors in the area, but found nothing. They've never even been able to confirm if there was an ice cream truck in the area at the time. There were hundreds of tips, if not thousands, in the early days, but many of them turned out to be false leads. In one particular incident, Mikkel's dad got an email from someone who said they were holding Mikkel for a ransom. Police traced the sender, and the entire thing turned out to be a prank. One possible offender who's discussed a lot in this case is a man named Dee Blaylock. Blaylock was a neighbor of the Biggs and a registered sex offender. He was questioned shortly after Mikkel disappeared, and he told police that he'd been at home watching TV when she was last seen. His wife backed up his claim. Then, about nine months after Mikkel's disappearance, Blaylock assaulted another one of his neighbors, a woman named Susan Quinette. He broke into her house sexually assaulted her, choked her until she blacked out, set the house on fire, and left her for dead. Fortunately, she survived this encounter and later told police she thought Mikkel was buried in his house. After this assault, police started to look into Blaylock more regarding Mikkel's disappearance. They searched his house but didn't find anything of use. According to Kimber, Blaylock had a trailer on his property that they didn't search because they didn't have a warrant for it at the time. By the time they did get a warrant, he didn't have the trailer anymore. 
Blaylock was sentenced to 187 years in prison for the assault on Susan Quinnett. Mikkel's parents met with him in prison, where he denied any involvement in Mikkel's disappearance. According to them, he said he couldn't be held responsible for what his other personality did. But they thought he was lying and still appear to believe to this day that he was involved. Police believe this as well, but have never had enough evidence for an arrest. Blaylock allegedly confessed to being involved while in prison, but has always publicly denied involvement. As the years went by, Mikkel's parents started to doubt she would come home alive. Kimber agrees and says she would hate to think Mikkel has been somewhere out there going through hell all this time. About five years after Mikkel was last seen, the family held a funeral for her. This gave them a sense of closure as well as a spot where they could go to grieve. I do want to make one note about Mikkel's memorial. The engraving on the stone says she was born in 1989. This would have made her nine when she was abducted. However, every other source I found covering this case says she was 11, and some sources specifically say she was actually born in 1987. The reason for this contradiction isn't clear. On March 14, 2018, a $1 bill with a strange message on it was reported to police in Wisconsin. The message read, My name is Mikkel Biggs, kidnapped from Mesa, Arizona. I'm alive. Police did look into this lead, but most people don't believe it's real. Not only is Mikkel's name misspelled on the bill, but the handwriting appeared to a lot of people to be that of a child. The bill was printed in 2009, when Mikkel already would have been an adult. But a few people disagree. Some don't think the handwriting looks like a child's. Others wonder if Mikkel purposefully misspelled her name to save space, or to be able to tell her captor that it wasn't really her who wrote the message if they found out about it. Most people do seem to believe it's a hoax, and there's not much more information about it out there. So what happened to Mikkel Biggs? There aren't really many theories in this case. People who knew about it in the early days said there was a lot of speculation then that the ice cream truck driver was responsible. Others wonder if her abductor wasn't really an ice cream truck driver, but simply emulated the music of an ice cream truck to lure in children. And some people believe Dee Blaylock really was involved. Most people agree she was abducted, we just don't know who did it or where she is now. Mikkel's disappearance spawned what was, at least at the time, the largest missing persons investigation in Arizona's history. 35 abandoned mine shafts were searched, hundreds of people were questioned, and every ice cream vendor in the state was interviewed. Despite the scant evidence at the scene, more than 800 items of evidence were gathered, including Kimber's bicycle. The bicycle was checked for fingerprints and DNA, and it's still kept in evidence in case any newer technology comes out in the future that can help. Mikkel's parents later moved to Utah, but as of 2019, Kimber still lives in Mesa. She and police believe Mikkel's remains are probably in the area. As of May 2022, there have been no named suspects or arrests in Mikkel's disappearance. Police hope that whoever presumably kidnapped her will one day be unable to deal with their guilty conscience and come forward. Mikkel Biggs was 11 years old when she was last seen in Mesa, Arizona on the evening of January 2nd, 1999. Mikkel is a white female who was 4 feet 8 inches tall and 65 to 85 pounds at the time of her disappearance with brown hair and hazel eyes. She was last seen wearing a red t-shirt with the name of her school, Lindbergh, printed on it, bell-bottom jeans, white canvas shoes, and a purple Barbie watch. She has several moles on the left side of her neck, 
and would be 34 years old if alive today. This video is set to go live on May 15th, 2022, meaning that she will celebrate her 35th birthday very soon. If you have any information about this case, you can contact the Mesa Police Department at 480-644-2211.